Merhaba. Again, we are again so excited to be on this platform, Cross TV. We are blessed to be able to get you this message. I'm Karen, Karen Hill. And I'm Tony, of course. You, know, you guys can't forget me. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a guy on the side. Uh, I'm just here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are husband and wife, yeah. and uh, we have a mission, and yeah. we have a ministry, and that's a health and fitness. Yeah. See, uh, we have to be fed as Christians the word and spiritually, and we have to grow. And, but we forget the physical part. So in order to do what God tells us to do, and our mission, we have to be also physically and mentally strong. Otherwise, we want to do it. We want to be an example, but we cannot do it. So that this is where we come in. And I have a burden. My husband has a burden. Uh, we, I believe that, first of all, I believe that whatever upsets you in this world and whatever angers you, and you want to do something about it, and you cannot stop, that's your mission. God gives you gifts. Nobody is just created for just like nothing. We all have a mission, a purpose. We are so blessed, husband and wife, that we know what we are supposed to do. So but how did we come to that? We came to that you know, which is a good question that people need to know. You know, you come, you come to the awareness of knowing what God wants. When, when, you, when you know that there's something that you actually will do for free, when you know that you will actually do it for free with the same passion as, as if you would have gotten a billion dollars, you know that's truly your gift. And also the most important thing about a gift is actually giving God the glory for the gift. Because remember, gifts are given to you for free. You don't have to do anything to deserve it, but you have to work to perfect it. Right. And in order to perfect that gift, you have to really accept the fact that there is nothing good in you and stop trying to be good to God because he already knows. Uh, he knows everything about us. So I think the reality is just facing the facts that you are who you are, where you are. And if you're in a place where you think you need to change, then change it. Or if you're in a place where you have a job where you don't want to be, then find out what is it that you love. And don't buy into the system where they say, hey, wait till you're 65, then you can do what you love to do. That's called <laughs> retirement. But <laughs> then you sit on your gift for 65 years, right? No, nah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> no, we don't want to yeah. do that. And I, um, we have a main scripture. Well, I picked the scripture and Tony went along with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's what I, you know, it's what I do, you know, after 20 plus years, I mean, hey, you know. She, <laughs> but I do have always a sight scripture, so I'm going to read both because um, I, I don't know, I cannot memorize it's a, it's it. It's so, a side scripture? A side scripture. I, what does that mean? I always add a different scripture every show. So we have a main scripture, so he didn't know. Do you see? Uh, We're so prepared. Well, you have a main scripture and a side scripture? A exactly. A side scripture? A side scripture. Is it scripture. like having... Exactly. Like dessert? Isn't that fun? Like dessert after exactly. the main meal? Oh, okay. You got that okay. right. Okay. First Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Or do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is what we have to work on, the temple. Uh, my side scripture is mm. Ephesians 5, 29. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. That sounds like something about the wife, huh? Well, I... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I had, I had a flashback. You had a flashback. That's what God tells us to do for the wife anyway, to, to, to love her as ourselves. But also yeah. the body, mm -hmm. our physical body um, is extremely, extremely important. You know, I always tell people, I always tell people, I ask, you know, when you go to church, 
Do you throw a trash on the floor or do you spit on the floor? They go, oh my God, are you crazy? Um, it's, you can't do that. That's God's place. And I go, really? We built that building. I mean, we, if you put a, a disco ball, that becomes a disco. Not a church, but a disco. So automatically, it's a building that humans built. But this body, first of all, it's not replaceable. You can't just rebuild another one. And God gave it to you to do its work. How dare we not take care of it? So today, I had a plan. Uh, you know, I said, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. But then God changed it all. So even Tony found out the last minute what we will talk about. We are so prepared. Um, you know, I had a revelation. You know, we read the Bible. We read the stories. Um, and it's, it's eyewitnesses. They walk with Jesus. And they wrote it down. And we say, okay, we're reading it. And we feel like we've been there. And we're taking some information and life lessons. And we're applying it to our lives. And we're saying that was then. But I said, you know what? We are still walking with Jesus. There's no difference between then and now. But the only thing we can write about, it's our own life. Because that's what they wrote. Their experiences and their life and the stories. So I said, we need to, the only thing I can give you because um, I didn't go to the Bible school. I, can't, I can barely memorize a scripture. But the only thing I can offer you is my testimony with God, what Jesus did for me. So, because that's my life, and I'm excited. I wanted to share it. You might relate. What do you think about that? <laughs> nothing to say. Oh, my God, nothing to say. <laughs> well, in, in, emphatically, God says that, uh, the Word of God says that we're overcome by, by our testimony. And basically, that's, that's really all we have, and that's all we're supposed to have. Unfortunately, we, we think that the more education we have as a result of where we come from uh, is better, but it is not. Simply is where you come from means more to God and to testify of that miracle than, than any educational degree or anything in the world. So when you hear us talk about um, God and when you hear us talk about um, what he has shown us and what he has done for us, it's a, re it's a reality check for us every day because it truly is a true statement that my wife is saying. It's not that she's trying to be uh, religious in the sense of, of using the terminology, but uh, it's really how we desire to, to live uh, because we've had, we live with ourselves every day, huh, don't we, hon? That's I mean, right. A lot of the issues that we deal with, I'm sure you guys deal with them too, uh, especially when you're together with another human being and, you're, and your worlds are always different. You just learn to compromise a lot of things, but uh, Today, I thought, I, I mean, I knew that's what she was going to do anyway, and I think it would be pretty interesting because every time she talks about it, I learn something different okay. about her. So uh, please understand that we, this is from our hearts to you. That is right, from our hearts, from my life. So maybe listeners or watchers uh, will um, relate to this. I am from Middle East. I am from Istanbul, Turkey. I'm an Armenian uh, born and raised in Turkey. Uh, born under the umbrella of Christian. Knew God, and that's about it. Um, most of my childhood, we had to not be ourselves, first of all, not talk even in Armenian, not to go to church, like, live like that. So I never attended church. I, I learned about God, but that's about it. I didn't learn about Jesus. I didn't learn about anything. I come, uh, let's say, from a good 
family, known, in a small society type of thing. And, um, but I was always different. And in Middle East, in my culture, we grow up not enough. You are not good enough, not smart enough, criticize, you have to be perfect. We like to uh, make other people happy. Uh, we live for other people and to make proud. So that's how I grew up. So I was very different. And I was criticized for all that. Um, I talked too much. I asked too many questions. I was like a boy. I had different kind of uh, friends. I uh, hang out with different type of people that it was not approved. So that's how I grew up. Uh, and I thought they were bad because they said, OK, this is not good. You have to change. But God, now I found out that God made me that way on purpose so I can do what I am doing now perfectly because he gave me this gift. I didn't know. Um, I should be dead by now. I had gun on my um, head one time. I tried to kill myself. Uh, I have a lot of stories. I was miserable. I was depressed. I'm the only child, so I was selfish. I was spoiled. Um, and I come to the United States by grace of God because now I look bad, back. Everything had a purpose. I'm like, oh, my God. It was all a plan. I didn't know anything about it. Then... 31 years old, a lot of years passed, I'm living for myself, okay, but miserable. Then I met Tony. <laughs> we met, and I was still miserable. I was still not happy, uh, one day crying, one day laughing, who knew? Then I tried to pull him down, not knowingly, but, and then I goes, nothing is happening to him. He's happy. He's peaceful. He didn't say anything about God. He didn't say anything about it, but he showed by his actions. And I was like, but what is I was miserable too. Oh. <laughs> I said, what does he have that I do not have? Why is he so happy even in the bad times and have a peace, inner peace? I don't have. I wanted it so bad. Then I started asking questions. I asked questions. I'm the kind of person that want to know. Show me. Show me in the Bible. Show me in the books. Then I will believe. I ask a lot of questions. He answered as much as he can. Then he said, OK, that's it. I don't know. I can't answer anymore. You want specific answers. I don't know. Then I started asking a client of ours that was also Christians. They said, we can't answer you anymore. I was looking. I was looking. And one night, a minister ended up coming to San Diego. That's where we were living. And for one night from New York, said, OK, we're going to introduce you to him. I asked all my questions. He answered all my questions. He ended up being from Greece, which is pretty much my background. I was saved then. And I can tell you, and I can tell you, since then, my whole life is changed. I believe that Tony can tell more about that than me because I'm going to, go ahead, honey. You're going to want to cry? No, I'm not oh, going to okay. cry. Yeah. Um, it was, a, for me, it was an eye-opening experience because um, the, I think the, the reality was that I saw a young lady that was struggling, but she didn't see I was struggling. She didn't see that I was also uh, 
having a very difficult time with my life. But I was at a, at a position in, in God to where, you know, it's like a loving father. And I, and I put this to my son because uh, like a couple days ago, me and my son had a really rough time. And uh, I just said, hey, you know what? You come home when I let you come home. And then at the end of the conversation, you know, um, when I heard his voice and when he wrote me and told me he was apologetic and everything, um, it, it wasn't, it, I was looking for that, but when I listened to her story, I understand more and more each day the power of God's love for us because when I saw my son, I started looking at him a little differently because at the end of the day, he's my son. So at the point when I was in my position, God was letting me know that, hey, you're my son. And even though you may not understand her, you need each other. You're not, you're not my gift to her, and she's not her gift to you. You need each other. And so because of that, um, she gave her life to Christ that, that evening. And, and, you know, we've been going through some really difficult things, but as we, as we talk about uh, as we get to know you, uh, we'll explain to you more and more what we have experienced through health and fitness and, and exercise because that tells a lot about your lives as well. But in the, uh, to make a long story short, I've watched her grow uh, tremendously. Uh, I've watched her parents, uh, sometimes they're understanding, but sometimes they're not. But, you know, when God is in it, you, no human can really get it, you know, if you don't because you don't fit the mold, and she never fit the mold. So, but it wasn't easy for her to be, uh, to serve God. It wasn't easy for her to walk with God, even though she didn't fit the mold of life. Uh, it's kind of like me, you know, the same way. I, I always wondered why I was different, but I didn't go to that extreme. You know, I was hit by a car when I was 16, and I was dead on arrival. And then God began to restore my life over a process of time until today, which, in fact, her and I uh, are really growing every day. I can honestly say that I am actually learning how to date her. It's really crazy because we're kind of going backwards instead of forward. <laughs> yes, I it's know. crazy. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, if I, could, if I could bottle it up and sell it to you, I would. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> that's a market I cannot, you know, that's not FDA approved. <laughs> okay. But uh, the thing is, is that um, I can say that the way God has it set up between a man and a woman is very simple. The man dies, the woman lives. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but that's how it works, okay? But with your death as a man, she begins to see life, and she begins to exemplify the body of Christ or the church uh, as a result of the man's death. There's no way around it, guys. That's how that works. So... Is there the only encouragement I have to do that is to just obey God? It's simple. It's simple to say, but very difficult to do. But in her story that she's just shared with you, uh, it really has been uh, incredibly um, exciting sometimes for me to watch her just grow and to mature. And I, I, I tell you, when I look at her, I mean, she, to me, uh, she is one. She is the most beautiful thing. Oh. Uh, I mean, you know, she is, you know, she, she don't, I don't know how she takes that, but, you know, I cannot stop looking at her. She's pretty from all angles. Okay, and I think that's TV what God, now. yeah, stop. Um, <laughs> I didn't even talk like this when I was, when I was uh, dating you. I didn't even that talk is like right. this. I would sing you a song is what I would do. Yeah. A but, lot. but, mm. uh, what I want to say is what we think it's bad and not worthy and broken and oh you're not going to amount to anything you are the black sheep oh you you won't even ah, you, you can't even find yourself a husband oh you're never going to have kids oh you're never going to go to college God can take that and restore it and now the interesting thing I am the, how you call it, the proud, no, the, 
of the Armenian. She's the, she's the, she's the talk of the community. The talk of the community. The most the, successful person. Yeah, the black sheep, yeah. but God did it all, all. And I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you one thing. All the things that I know about health, I am not supposed to know. I didn't, I went to school. I didn't learn it at school. I didn't learn it at books. How do I know? Because I know because God gave me this gift. A, a thousand percent I know. I mean, like my name is Karen, I know. So I am, there is hope for everyone. Mm -hmm. God can take the broken, the and make it beautiful. With that, I have a letter. Oh, I yeah. want to read it before yeah. we got a letter. Got a letter from the. Yes, yes, we do. Um, this letter is from a lady that mm -hmm. was born uh, Muslim but saved. Um, she wrote this. Wow, what a teaching you gave me. First of all, I am a note taker, so I did the same as I was listening to you both. I love the fact that you keep clearly mentioning that it's a part of our walk with God, not for the next bikini season. It also hit me when Tony talked about repentance and being a soldier. Amen. I never thought of diet started with die. Good detail there. Karen, my superhero, I loved when you pointed out the importance of nutrition routine that needs to fit as a lifetime goal. I agree every word you guys said. My humble opinion for the next show, which we're going to take that, is may be you could include people who think it's too late. It's never too late. I'm 51 years old. He's old. Uh, <laughs> Because in the end, you closed it by saying you will talk about kids' wellness, nutrition, post-prenatal exercise, athletes of all levels, etc. I thought, how about people like me over 40 years old and have never exercised or thought the change would be possible? God has created an amazing body, doesn't know chronological age, so anytime you can do it. I search a bit of what the word says about it. It's not it's not too late. Here are my findings. It's all a matter of really believing. If you believe, you will definitely see the glory of God. Can he not raise the death from the grave? John 11, Lazarus' resurrection. We see two different approaches to the situation in this chapter. Sisters, Martha and Mary. Martha believes so that she has hope, unlike Mary, who doesn't show signs of hope. As we now know, it was not too late for Lazarus because of... Jesus. Yeah. Another interesting point that came up to me was that we fail because we give up too soon. Mm. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not get tired of doing what is right, for after a while we will reap an, a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. So thank you for yes, your yes, uh, yes. letter. Um, that is great. So I, is it almost time that we, I should yeah, stop talking? I think it's almost time. Um, no. I should, but but um, you know we want to show them. Yes, uh, well, we have a surprise and, and then, for the next show. This is what's coming up. And then okay. We gotta, then I'm gonna uh, go ahead. Talk, and then I want to. This is. Hmm. What are they? Oh, here you go, honey. Hold it. Oh. Wow. Five pounds of fat. See, and you put it right here. It's, it's, this is where the word fathead came. And this from. is a five pound of <laughs> muscle. So as you see, we want to. Open the gates of the prison of numbers for you. So we're going to talk about real health, real weight, real strength, uh, so that you, you want to hold it. Uh, thank you very much. So that we can, uh, you can concentrate on being the best version of you, yes. not just go look at the scale and be depressed. Yes. Because exactly. if that's the case, I should be depressed because I'm heavy. But I look small, but I'm heavy. So forget it. So we're going to talk about that next show. Okay. So if you have any questions for us, please, on the screen, look at the, the bottom of the screen, and you'll see. It'll tell you how to send us your questions, your concerns, things like that about what you need from us. And we'll get back to you and talk, talk about it on the next show. But... It, 
But what I like to do for you is something special that I've never done before. I mean, on this show. Oh, anyway. go ahead. Exactly. You didn't know that. Surprise, Surprise for now, me. Huh? Thank you. So I want to close with, with singing something that might encourage you that was that encouraged me. And, and it's a beautiful song. It's very quick. It goes like this. May tomorrow be a perfect day. May you find love and laughter along the way. May God keep you in his tender care till he brings us together again. To, in, to you, we love you, right? We love you. A new you. Keep us in mind. Keep us in your heart. If you need anything from us, please, please reach out to us, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.